do you feel the need to reconnect with the spirit of Christmas? No. Well, if you did, maybe it's time you spent a week at the Christmas retreat. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. So we start with this woman, Kim. She's a vile lawyer and she's so obsessed with work that she misses the work Christmas party to find a way to get a community centre closed down for her firm's rich, soulless clients. This is such impressive work that her boss is considering making her a partner. Wow, that's big. She's late to meet her boyfriend, Steve, for dinner, so steals this guy's cab. I wonder what happens at the end. Hmm. When she meets Steve, she starts talking about work. Sorry, I'm late. You would not believe the day I had. Yeah, Steve's not interested and neither am I. How are you? I think we need to break up. What? He's like, yeah, sorry, but all you ever do is talk about work and I've had enough. Bye. The next day, we meet Mark. He's the guy whose cab Kim stole earlier. Regular viewers of this channel will recognize him as Brad from Christmas on My Mind. But in this, his name's Mark. This morning, Mark's boss is breaking the news to him that he's being passed over for promotion, partly because he was late for the meeting last night. Mark's not having that, so he quits. He calls his sister Ray to tell her, and she's like, oh, good, you can come to my Christmas retreat. And he's like, I'm not going to a Christmas retreat. What's a Christmas retreat, I hear you ask? Well, more on that later. Later. I miss my big brother. Right, so he's going. Meanwhile, Kim's mum comes to her office to see her. She's like, hi, Kim. Did Steve propose to you last night like you thought he would? And she's like, no, actually, he dumped me. Good. So Kim's mum suggests she comes with her to a Christmas retreat her friend told her about. That way, she can reconnect with Christmas. I'm sorry, did, did you say with Christmas? Yeah. Her boss overhears this and says, yeah, that sounds like a good idea to me. So Kim agrees. And here we are at the Christmas retreat. Mark is first to arrive, and here come Kim and her mum. Ray introduces herself and her husband, whose name is irrelevant, to the guests as the holiday activities directors. And oh no, it looks like Mark's recognised Kim as the woman who stole his cab. Oh no! There's one really important rule at this retreat. No laptops, tablets or cell phones. So Kim hides her phone in her pocket. Mark's reluctant to hand his over too. On their way to their cabins, Kim's phone starts vibrating, and it might be Steve. So Kim Kim escapes from her mum and answers it. But oh no, Mark has caught her. Cell phones are strictly forbidden here. So, so what, you're gonna rat me out? Maybe. Ooh. He's like, I remember you. You're that bitch who stole my cab and got me sacked. But oh no, his phone starts vibrating and it could be a recruiter. So they make a deal to keep this between them. Great. Back at the lodge, Ray and her husband, whose name is irrelevant, tell the guests what to expect over the next week. They'll be exploring the seven quintessential elements of Christmas, such as charitable giving, reconnecting with loved ones, and holiday baking. Are you serious? Yep, this is true. I'm not making this up. Okay. Then at the end, they'll enjoy a big Christmas Eve feast. But that all starts tomorrow, so today they can relax and get to know each other. And here's where Kim's mum meets this guy, Ted. <laughs> Yeah, so they're in love. Isn't that a little soon? No, it's not. The next day, the first lesson is making the perfect shortbread. Yeah, all right, Mark. Kim's rubbish at this, and she's like, Mum, I don't know anything about shortbread. All I care about is legal business and my clients. But, oh, look, Mark's rubbish too. Another thing they've got in common. That's nice. <laughs> because Kim's so useless, her mum asked Ted to come over to help her cream her butter. <laughs> Ew. Kim's phone vibrates again, and it's a message from Steve. So she goes under the table to reply to it, but she gets caught. So she decides to throw Mark under the bus. He has his phone too. Traitor. Their punishment is to put the decorations up outside together. It's here that Mark explains to Kim that he and Ray grew up at this lodge and inherited the land when their dad died. He's not that keen on the retreat, so Ray runs it because she's obsessed with Christmas. Kim tells Mark that she's hoping this retreat will help her to win Steve back. Mark's like, you're not going to survive seven days here. I doubt you'll even make it to the Christmas Eve feast. And she's like, yes, I will. The afternoon's activity is making gingerbread houses. And Mark's really good at this because he once took a structural engineering class. I'm not making this up, by the way. This actually happens. Later, Mark's rifling through Ray's drawer and finds an offer to buy the land from a big soulless corporation. He's like, Ray, what's this? And she's like, yeah, the place isn't making enough money, so I don't have a choice. In fairness, I'm not surprised. They run this retreat for one week every year, and there are only eight people there. Take out Mark, Ray, and her husband, whose name is irrelevant, and that leaves five paying guests. That's not going to pay for anything. Good point. <laughs> 
Back at Kim's cabin, her mum's putting the Christmas tree up and she's brought all her own decorations from home. Kim's like, where's the angel tree topper? And her mum's like, yeah, I dropped it and it's smashed. Oh. Kim's like, have you and Ted shagged yet? And her mum's like, no. When are you and Mark going to bang? And she's like, ugh, never. The next morning, Mark and Kim bond over their love of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I see. And here's something else Kim's rubbish at, lighting a fire. But it's OK, because Mark is a man, so he understands scrunched up paper and kindling. Hey, it's working. Yes, of course. Now that's done, Kim can start talking about Steve again. I was so sure that he was going to propose. Boring. Today is craft day. <laughs> Today is craft day. So first, there's a scavenger hunt to find the materials they need in the woods, because that's sustainable. <laughs> Mark knows all about trees because he's a man, remember? So he helps Kim. First, they're making wreaths and Kim's mum comes over and puts tree stuff in Kim's hair. Dan takes a photo of this precious moment. <laughs> when Kim sees the photo, she wants a hard copy of it to send to Steve. Now they're making ugly Christmas sweaters. Mark's like, I'm going to make the ugliest sweater. And Kim's like, no, I am. So they have a bet and the loser has to wear theirs for a whole day. It's a tie. Woo! <laughs> Not sure who made that American whooping noise, but I bet it was this guy here. Anyway, so now they're both wearing Christmas sweaters. Then we get a montage of them playing games and having fun before going for a walk in the Christmas snow. Then there's this snowball fight. Whatever. When they get back to the lodge, they sit around the fire pit talking about Christmas memories. The next morning, Kim and her mum are going to build snow ladies. Let's get this ball rolling. I hope Mark doesn't see this, because in his mind, there's only snowmen. Anything else is progressive, woke trash. The next, <laughs> the next workshop is on Christmas correspondence. Kim will be writing to Steve, and she's going to include that photo. But oh no, she's forgotten to get her mum a Christmas present. Luckily, Mark's on his way into town to mail the Christmas letters, so Kim jumps in his car. She's like, take me into town, Mark. Okay. When they get to town, Kim sees this angel tree topper, just like the one her mum smashed. I prefer an Amazon gift voucher, but hey, maybe that's just me. Then Mark and Kim go for dinner and have a really nice time, yeah. The next day, they're off to find the perfect Christmas tree to donate to the local retirement centre. When they get to the retirement centre, Kim is wearing an elf hat thing and Mark is wearing reindeer antlers. Why? Because it's hilarious. Really? No. Kim then goes to help Mark untangle some Christmas lights. Well, I always knew I would be in the lawyer. Yeah, not interested. But hang on. She's now thinking maybe she should dedicate her life to helping others after spending 20 minutes at the retirement centre. Right. And no, we don't actually see any retired people. We just know they're there. Kim is now such a nice person that she suggests they invite the residents of the retirement centre to the Christmas Eve feast. And that's made Kim feel so good about herself, she decides to quit her job. Oh, come on. She's like, this Christmas retreat has really changed my life. I'm definitely going to come back next year. And Mark's like, yeah, we're selling the lodge. Why? And he's like, it was already running at a loss. Then you decide to invite the residents to the retirement centre for the feast. And now it's essentially bankrupt. She's like, no, you can't get rid of this place. Look what it's done for us. What do you mean us? Uh, so Mark goes to Ray and tells her not to sell and that he's going to work there full time to help out. He's like, we can run retreats all year round. Maybe even rent it out. Yes. And Ray's like, I'm so happy now. Yeah. So they email the Solus Corporation to tell them they can shove their offer up their then Ray tells Mark to tell Kim that he's in love with her. He's like, what? I met her five days ago. And she's like, yeah, just do it anyway. Well, that makes sense. Meanwhile, Kim's mum is telling Kim to forget about Steve and get with Mark. And she's like, yeah, OK. But oh, no, Steve is here. He saw that photo of Kim and immediately realised he made a mistake. He asked her to marry him. And oh, no, Mark has walked in. Mark. Uh, this is Stephen. Right. <laughs> Kim takes Steve outside and she's like, look, Steve, sorry, but I found someone who actually wants to listen to my work stories. And Steve's like, yeah, he's pretending because you've not had sex yet. Trust me, as soon as that's happened, he'll drop the act. Correcto mundo. And she's like, whatever, Steve. But first, let me go and make sure that he's up for it. When she goes into Mark, he's in a mood about all this Steve business. So he tells her to just go back home. So she leaves with Steve. On the way home, they stop at the place she went for dinner with Mark. And Steve's not only rude to the waitress, but he's also really dismissive of all the activities Kim did at the Christmas retreat. Then when she tells him she's quit her job, he's like, good, you can stop work altogether and be a housewife and mother to our children. And she's like, okay, that's it. I'm going back to the Christmas retreat. And Steve 
Steve's like, okay, bye. But oh no, she can't get any cell phone service and the landlines are down. But what's this? Mark has arrived as he decided to come after her. And yeah, you can guess what happens next. They go back to the feast. Ray announces that they're not selling the lodge. Everyone's really happy, yeah. Then Mark and Kim start dancing and then they kiss. And that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And please consider joining my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you.